Hello friends, in today's video we're going to go over the best builds to solo the brand new 7 star Samurott raid that's dropping later this week in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But before we get into the video, please subscribe to the channel, remember you can always unsubscribe later if you'd like to. So kicking off later this week on Friday the 31st of March and running over that weekend, the 7 star Samurott raid will be coming to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It will have the bug terror type tied to it and will as always be level 100 like all other 7 star raids. Now the bug terror typing that Samurott carries does throw up a few problems going into this raid but nothing that we can't overcome. Obviously the things that you would normally bring against bug types are rock, fire which are really not the best Pokemon to bring against Samurott as it's going to have water type attacks as its base moves. So we're predominantly going to be looking at flying types as our main way to hit it but doesn't restrict us just to flying types but we've got some builds that we're going to go over in today's episode that will give you the best shot of making this as easy as possible in game so you don't need to go online if you don't want to and you'll be able to just run through this and farm this event as much as possible. So starting off as always we'll take a quick overview of Samurott, have a look at all of its details and what we could expect going into this terror raid. As you can see it is going to have the abilities torrent or the hidden ability shell armor. It will be level 100 of course like all other 7 star raids and it will have that bug terror typing. It's based speed for those of you that want to know is 70 so it's not the fastest of pokemon and it's hp for this seven star raid because of that 30 times multiplier will be around 9930 so that's the hit points that you're going to have to do damage wise to Samurott to remove it from the field. It's move options, it's got Mega Horn, X Scissor are gonna be its big kind of bug type attacks that you would see playing off that bug terror typing. I'd imagine it will be Mega Horn over anything else, it's more base power, but it is shaky on the accuracy, not the most accurate of attacks. Its signature move is Shell Armor, which is it's one of its water type attacks, so you could probably see that on it. Sacred Sword is another option as a fighting type stab. Aqua Cutter as well has a high critical hit ratio, another signature attack on Samurott and a water type attack at that. Then you're going to look at your more standard water type attacking options like Waterfall Liquidation. It has Night Slash as well and we'll get into why we've put Night Slash there in a moment. And obviously another coverage move that it does get is Avalanche. It does get access to things like Grass Knot as well so if you are planning on bringing water type Pokemon to go against this then that is something just to keep in the back of your mind as a possibility but predominantly Samurott probably going to be more of a physical attacker in this raid I would imagine it might be mixed but predominantly I would say more of a physical attacker because all of its big attacking moves like the Mega Horn, like the Razor Shell, like the Aqua Cutter, they're all going to be physical type attacks. So it would make sense that it's going to play off that attacking stat rather than the special attacking stat that it does have access to. Now it's setup options that it does have, you're looking at things like Sword Stance, that's probably going to be the biggest one top of the list where it's going to be able to boost its attacking stat by two stages every time it uses it. So it can get quite out of control quite quickly. Focus Energy is another one and this was brought up in our comment section earlier on in the announcement video and a really good one at that. Because Samurott does get access to high critical hit ratio moves like the Aqua Cutter and that Night Slash, we could see something like Focus Energy being that first turn move before we're able to get an attack off onto the field where it boosts the critical hit ratio even further, meaning those attacks are going to be landing critical hits, which also in turn makes it even more difficult because if we're using defense boosting moves then it will just nullify those and hit through and do double the damage anyway. Encore is another option as well we may see on Samurott it will punish things like setup options on our side of the field and you know the developers might be thinking well that Decidueye raid was pretty easy for a lot of people just to set up in front of and run through this raid let's throw a spanner in the works let's throw Encore on there so if you use something like Sword Stance, Iron Defense or anything like that and then you get encore into it you're going to be limited what you can do for the next three to four turns. Rain Dance is also another option on Samurott. It will of course boost all of its water type attacks that it can come out of it but for general speaking the set of options that we would be worried about I think these are the main ones. If you've got any more drop them down in the comment section I would love to hear them. So with the overview of Samurott there we'll get into game and we'll look at the builds that we're going to be taking into this raid event. So top of the list and this one is Coriodon. I think it plays a lot like the Mariodon that we went into the Decidueye raid with and I've got to give a big shout out to my friend Light who sent me over this build that we're starting off with today and I think probably one of the more solid ones 
for this particular raid event. The fighting and the dragon typing on Coriodon means that you're going to be able to resist the bug type attacks and the water type attacks that are coming out from it. If Samurott does have access to something like Avalanche, you're going to have to worry about that or any ice type moves. But other than that, Coriodon typing wise is going to be immaculate for this raid event. We've got the life orb held item on here and the terror typing is fire, which we'll get to in the minute. The moveset that we've got for this Coriodon is going to be Sunny Day, Screech, Sword Stance and Flare Blitz with an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack and the ability of Richard Clum Pulse, if I'm pronouncing that right, which I'm probably not, so apologies about that, but you get the idea with the ability there. It's only got one ability. Anyway, the idea with this set is if we see Rain Dance on the Samurott, you can set that Sunny Day up turn one, then you go for the Screech three times, you go for the Sword Stance three times, and then you hit it for super effective damage with the Flare Blitz, which would be boosted by the Sun, which should be already on the field. Like I say, the Sunny Day is there just to overwrite the Rain Dance if it is an option on the Samurott. But this is the Coridon. I feel like a very solid build going into this one and it should do a good job against it. The only drawback I would say about this build in particular is going for that fire terror typing because once you do terrestrialize, you're going to be subjected to those water type attacks. You're going to be taking super effective damage and it could get a little bit tricky, especially if the Samurott is boosting itself up with something like Sword Stance. So if that is a problem, we can approach that a little bit differently when the raid comes out. Of course, when all the details are confirmed for the Samurott raid, we can maybe look at changing that just to give us a little bit more stability when we're going up against it if we're using Coriodon. But that is the Coriodon build, and as always, all of the builds will be linked down in the description if you want to take a closer look at them for yourselves after the video. Next up is probably one of my favorites for this raid in particular, and it is going to be Corva Knight. It is going to have the flying terror type, and we've given it the held item, the metronome. So what the metronome does is if you use a sim move consecutively, it does raise the attack power of that move until you kind of max it out at like five or six turns, I think. So it's a really good one if you are constantly just using one attack. Once you've set up with Corviknight, then you're gonna be using its main flying type attack. So that metronome is gonna be able to boost on top of that. We don't need to worry about uh, HP recovery because we do have Roost on this set as well. And the move set we've got is Roost, Iron Defense, Bulk Up and Drill Peck. So EV spread on this one is 252 HP, 252 attack. And we have an Adamant Nature with that Mirror Armor ability as well. So the idea with this set would be to Iron Defense up three times, bulk up three times even though your defense is maxed out you still want to boost that attacking stat of Corviknight and then start using drill pecs to do super effective damage to this bug type Samurott and then roost accordingly when you need to recover any health but this is the Corviknight build that we've got here and I think a very good one as well very good on the defensive side of things going to be able to soak up all of those bug type moves because they're resisted by Corviknight that the Samurott could throw out at them you're going to take neutral damage from the water type attacks of course but at the same time if you're boosting your defense you're not really going to worry about those too much next up we have toxicroc another one that i really like going into this raid we've got the build of poison and fighting typing with the terror type of rock we've got the shell bell item on there and a move set of rain dance taunt sword stance and rock slide we've got a adamant nature with an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack, the rest just dumped into defense. And the big one here is gonna be that dry skin ability. It's gonna give you complete immunity to all of the water type attacks that come out from the Samurott. You're gonna resist the bug type attacks as well, which is pretty nice. Uh, so it, it makes for a very good build where you're gonna be able to have an easy time setting up against the Samurott really what you want to do is if it has got any setup options of its own if it's got any disruption moves you want to use that taunt turn one rain dance turn two that'll give you a line of recovery every turn then get your sword stances up and start hitting it with those rock slides and we do have the rock terror type on this toxic rock just to maximize damage on these rock slides and because of the dry skin ability even when you terrestrialize into the rock type you're not going to have that water type weakness you're still going to have that dry skin ability kicking in so you'll be recovering damage even if the samurai does decide to go for any water type attacks and with the rock slide you're going to be hitting it for super effective damage with that rock type attack 
back. So that is the Toxicroak. I really think a nice build as well, along with the Corviknight, probably one of the stronger ones to go into this raid with. Next up, we've got Vaporeon, another Pokemon that is going to play off its ability more than anything else. In this one, we've got a Water Terror typing on this. Shell Bell item, we've seen Vaporeon perform really well in previous seven star raids, and it should do the same sort of thing going into this one make sure it has got that water terror typing of course and the move set we're going to go with on this one is aqua ring that's going to give you a line of recovery every turn and then calm mind acid armor and stored power so the idea is you're going to want to get that aqua ring up turn one and then go for three acid armor three calm minds and then start launching the stored powers off and although it's not super effective against the samurai you're still going to do a lot of damage with how super stored power works and with those all those boosts behind you you should be doing a lot of damage of course the ability here like we mentioned is water absorbed so any water type attacks coming out from the samurai you're going to just be recovering health you're immune to those we've got an ev spread of 252 special attack 252 defense and a modest nature just to maximize your staying power on the field so you can take those big physical attacks from samurai a lot better and this is one of the ones that i did mention uh, if you were worried about maybe grass not as an option on samurai it could be something that you do see here you should be taking neutral damage from the bug type attacks and obviously with the acid armors boosting your defense every turn that you use it by two stages you're not really going to be taking too much damage from those anyway so vaporeon i think a really solid choice against samurai and probably something that you're going to have a lot of reliability going in if you do use this one next up is pelipper pelipper is a great pokemon to go into the samurai obviously going to resist those water type attacks and those bug type attacks we've given it the clover clock item here because we do have a line of recovery we've got the flying terror type on it as well with the move set of roost rain dance stockpile and hurricane ev spread of 252 hp 252 special attack and the ability drizzle so you're gonna summon the rain to the field the first turn you go into battle but just in case the rain does run out and you need it for your hurricane attacks then you've got rain dance on the set as well just to set it up again because hurricane in the rain is 100% accurate and it will be doing a lot of damage to the samurai boosted by that stab and obviously when you terrestrialize as well you'll also be resisting the bug type attacks as well from the samurai so it's a really nice one to bring and with stockpile as an option on there with the roost you can really kind of shore up those defenses by boosting your special defense and defense every time you use it and then just roost off any damage that's done and then just keep hitting it with the hurricanes obviously you've got the added bonus as well with hurricane you can confuse the samurai so can stop it moving uh, the turns if it does hit itself so it is a really nice build a solid one as well and a decent option if you want to go for something that we haven't already covered and the final one that we're going to cover today is cloister i really like cloister and there are a couple of options you can go with with cloister obviously a water and ice type pokemon going to resist the water type attacks that come out from samurai and particularly if they are on the physical end of things Cloyster has a huge defense stat, so it's going to be able to really soak those up pretty easily. We've went for the water terror typing on here, and you could if you're brave enough to go for the rock terror typing. I think it would maximize damage, but I feel like when you terrestrialize into the rock type, you don't have an ability to kind of protect you here, and you could get all your stat boosts kind of removed. So putting you in a bit of a precarious position, and you're going to be weak to those water type attacks once you do terrestrialize. So this is why I've kept the water typing terrestrialization here. It isn't really going to help us on an offensive point of view, but as a defensive terror type, it was going to really benefit us going into this raid event. We've got the Shell Bell item is a line of recovery here. We've got Iron Defense, Shell Smash, Rock Blast, and then Aqua Ring. So Aqua Ring, a bit like with the Vaporeon, going to recover health every turn after we've set it up. And then we've got the moveset Iron Defense, which we're going to use straight off the bat we're going to get three of those up and then shell smash which boosts our attack special attack and speed by two stages but does lower our defense stats so that's why you kind of combine it with the iron defense you don't want to really make yourself too weak on the defensive side and then you've got rock blast to kind of take advantage of that type weakness onto the samurai and obviously with the skill link ability there you're going to be hitting five times every time you use it and once you've boosted that attack enough you're going to be doing a lot of damage to this samurai we've got the ev spread of 252 hp 252 attack you don't really need any investment in 
defense. You can see how sky high that defense that is already with an adamant nature. So that is the cloister there. I do think a nice option and it's going to be one that I am definitely going to put some time investing into this one when this raid goes live because I feel like cloister with its defenses with the shell smash option on there, I think it can do a decent job against it. But all in all, these are the best builds that I think going into this one. I would say that probably the top two are going to be the Corviknight, the Toxicroak. I like the Coriodon a lot. I do worry about its terror typing and maybe that might need to be changed, but can't really say anything until the raid event goes live and see how it performs in battle. But the other ones, Outliers, are going to be Vaporeon, a very solid, consistent pick, of course, and Cloyster. Other options you can have are things like Slowbro. The, op the reason why I haven't included it in this video in particular is because Slowbro does have that psychic typing, so it will be weak to the bug type attacks and you're going to have to be able to terrestrialize before you're able to take those attacks a little bit better and because it will be coming off stab. I don't know if you're going to have room to get the iron defenses off before you get knocked out and that could make it a little bit tricky but Slowbro might be a decent option going into this one again iron hands probably not a bad option against this samurai it's got the defenses to kind of go into this raid and do a decent job but i don't think one of the more optimal picks going into this one but these are the best builds as i say all of the builds will be down in the description below i hope you found this video useful if you've got something in mind that you're thinking of taking into this raid do leave a comment down below i'd love to hear your thoughts on what you're planning on bringing and what you think of the builds that we featured in today's video please drop a like it does really help the channel subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more updates about anything going on in scarlet and violet and i will see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye